4.30 p.m. Good evening, I'm Chiu Lin on News 5 Tonight. Police fire tear gas and water cannon at a large rally in the Malaysian capital as protesters demand electoral reforms. DPMTO warns that the internet can help and harm social cohesion. The cyber world can quite quickly spill over to conflicts in the real world. A new council aims to get Singaporeans and new citizens more in tune with one another. And a high-profile Chinese activist said to be under U.S. protection after escaping house arrest. We begin in Malaysia, where police have clashed with protesters in the heart of the capital, Kuala Lumpur. The demonstrators were demanding electoral reforms ahead of upcoming general elections. But the outbreak of violence raises the risk of a political backlash that could delay those polls, which had been expected as early as June. Police fired tear gas and water cannon at the Bursay 3.0 protesters. They say they were forced to do so after the protesters trampled barbed wire barricades and entered Merdeka Square in defiance of a ban. Malaysia's Home Minister has also tweeted that police acted with utmost restraint and efficiency and that the situation is now under control. Now witnesses say there were at least 25,000 protesters, but media reports put the number as high as 80,000. Police say nearly 400 have been arrested and the figure is likely to rise. Our Malaysia Bureau Chief was in the thick of the action. Here is where the police fired the first round of tear gas to disperse thousands of protesters who attempted to break through the barricades and the barbed wires to get into Madeka Square, which is off limits to the protesters. Now, hours after the crackdown, tens of thousands of protesters are still on the streets, defying police order to disperse. Now, this will be the most fatal mistake that the police can ever make. We will definitely raise a public furor on this matter. Many Malaysians are watching in disbelief today that history is repeating itself. Police are firing tear gas and using water cannons to disperse crowd. Dataran is for the rakyat. It's yeah. the people's. It's Freedom Square. And therefore, it belongs to the people and we have the right to be there. I think with each birthday, with each generation, we become more and more emboldened. And, and we, we, become, we increase in our belief that, that we can actually bring a change. Now, as evening falls, the KL city centre is still a scene of chaos. Thousands of police officers are out, combing the streets, hauling up protesters. Some have gone into hiding. Others have become more and more emboldened to challenge the police as the standoff continues. Melissa Go, Channel News Asia, Kuala Lumpur. Well, simultaneous rallies were held in 11 cities across Malaysia, including in opposition-held Penang. Our reporter Saiful Bari Ismail was there. The crowd is starting to gather here at the Esplanade. Already a few hundred of them all dressed in yellow as the show of solidarity to Bursi's cause for a free and fair elections. Now, this rally is organized by Aliran. It's a civic society group and also a component member of Bursi. It's a hot day today and the organizers have placed cartons of mineral water all across the field for the people who are expected to gather here today. People participating in this birthday 3.0 rally in Penang have swelled to the thousands. This is beyond what the organizers have expected. The Chief Minister of Penang, Lim Guan Eng, is also here to give support. Participants I spoke to earlier believe that rallies like this can indeed bring about change. What we want is a clean and fair general election. It's now or never. I think in a democratic country, it's a, it's a way of the people to tell the government that uh, we are not uh, like the way that you do things. It's a chance that we write us, write us out uh, our thought, and I think definitely it would help because the world is watching us. We are not alone! Yeah! In his speech, the Chief Minister of Penang, Mr. Lim Guan Eng, urged those gathered at the Esplanade to keep on believing in the efforts to ask the government for a free and fair elections. It has been a peaceful rally here in Penang. The Chief Minister was escorted out of the area without any incidents. 
Just across the causeway from Singapore in Johor, there are conflicting reports about demonstrator turnout. Going by state TV footage, the Bursay campaign gained little traction here. Several locations where rallies had been planned barely attracted anyone at all. And some locals said they were irritated by the very idea of public protests. Di rakyat Malaysia kita ada hak untuk dalam situasi dalam pilihan raya untuk menentukan uh, kedudukan uh, satu pemerintahan itu lebih baik untuk rakyat Malaysia lah. Uh, pada saya uh, pimpunan bersih ni boleh menjelaskan lah dari segi keselamatan dan juga ekonomi lah dari segi pelancong pun mungkin akan takut datang ke Malaysia ni. Peniaga terpaksa tutup kedai, uh, apa tu rakyat semua uh, ketakutan lah macam saya tadi baru parking kat bawah tapi ada orang cakap uh, ada pimpunan terpaksa. In other headlines, Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Teo Chi Hien says social media is a double-edged sword when it comes to social cohesion. He spoke at an annual dialogue for the Community Engagement Programme. A cautionary note against technology. The Deputy Prime Minister said the very same internet that connects Singaporeans can also isolate people and disrupt social harmony. Anonymity on the internet emboldens people, encouraging them to take on more extreme views than they might otherwise. The internet also amplifies the extreme views even though they might be in the minority. And virtual mobs form the cheer or jeer which only help to accentuate the differences, polarize and inflame emotions further. Some 600 community, business and youth leaders and several government ministers joined the dialogue on Singapore's social challenges. And online behaviour, especially on social media, was a recurrent theme. If we believe that majority of Singaporeans are rational, cool-headed, calm in our responses, then surely this will be reflected in the way we relate to each other, be it on the social media space or the mainstream media space. So one of the conclusions from my group was indeed that all of us have this responsibility. At the end of the day, you can't have one set of rules uh, being imposed on a community if the community does not own that set of rules. Mr Chan said he hopes netizens will come forward to collectively shape the norms of online behaviour that are acceptable for Singaporeans. Technology was one of three driving forces Mr. Teo said can have a profound impact on Singapore's social resilience. Another driving force, immigration. Mr. Teo said Singapore needs to pay extra attention to new immigrants who are ready to sink their roots here and he urged Singaporeans to do their part to make new citizens feel more welcome. Extremism too remains on the radar. Mr. Teo said the extremist threat includes self-radicalized lone wolves like Norwegian gunman Anders Breivik who killed 77 people last year. But this threat can also rally people together in the fight against terror. This is where regular dialogues can play a useful role in strengthening the common ground across Singapore's different racial and religious communities. Singapore's newly formed People's Association Integration Council will have 15 members, one from each group representation constituency or GRC. They're called Integration and Naturalization Champions, and the council hopes to bring more focus and strategic direction to efforts to integrate new immigrants. <laughs> Learning a non-native tongue. This is the kind of assimilation the new Integration Council hopes to achieve with new citizens here. Unveiling the Council's new logo at the Integration Carnival, Second Minister for Home Affairs, Mr. S. S. Warren, stressed that integration is a two-way process. Newcomers must make the effort to learn about our multiracial society, appreciate and respect what is Singaporean culture, and adapt to our social norms. Equally, Locals should extend the hand of friendship to our newcomers and encourage them to play an active part in our community. Many were positive about future events that would promote interaction. This is a time whereby we can expand our circles of friends as well and to get to know them well and let them blend in with our culture and to be like one of the Singaporean as well. We are all from uh, many countries and uh, this is very nice for meet people and to uh, knew them and to find new friends. The council begins work in July. 
Still ahead on News 5, this man's attempt to squeeze into a bag looks like a practical joke, but it's actually key to unravelling a murder mystery. And here's something you don't see every day. A bear is captured after falling out of a tree in Colorado. More on how it happened when we return. News 5 tonight. A U.S.-based rights group says blind Chinese activist Chen Guangcheng is under U.S. protection in Beijing after he escaped from house arrest. There's speculation that the 40-year-old has taken refuge at the U.S. Embassy in the Chinese capital. The case could prove to be a diplomatic headache for Washington and an embarrassment for Beijing. It comes before the U.S. Secretary of State and Treasury Secretary are to hold high-level meetings in China next week. The Chinese government has refused to comment. As we told you last night, Chen confirmed his escape in an online video addressing Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao directly. He urged Mr. Wen to ensure the safety of his family, whom he left behind. A trained lawyer, Chen documented abuses in China's one-child policy, such as forced abortions. He was jailed in 2006 and then put under house arrest in Shandong in 2010. The European Union's top diplomat is the latest foreign VIP to visit Myanmar, and she's urged it to make progress towards democracy irreversible. The main thing is that the journey has begun, and we're here to help support that journey, so we can't go backwards. Ms. Ashton's visit comes days after the EU suspended a wide range of sanctions against Myanmar. She's also set to open an EU office in Yangon, the bloc's first diplomatic representation in Myanmar in half a century. All this is to reward the government for political and economic reforms and encourage it to do more. Ms. Ashton also met opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who was asked if her country might become the next economic Asian tiger. Not sure a tiger is exactly the, the animal that I would choose, but I, I think let, let's, we, we want to be the next best Asian human. Investigators in Britain are trying to unravel the mystery behind the death of a spy. His naked body was found locked in a sports bag nearly two years ago. An inquest is now underway to determine how he died, and police carried out an experiment to show that the idea that he got himself into the bag is a bit of a stretch. This police reconstruction shows a yoga expert trying to lock himself into a bag, just like the one 31-year-old Gareth Williams was found in. Williams had the key to the lock with him inside the bag, and there were no signs of a struggle. But the yoga expert tried the solo act 300 times without success. Williams' decomposed body was found inside the bag, resting in a bathtub in his London flat, one whole week after he failed to report for work at MI6, Britain's foreign intelligence agency. His family believes his death was linked to his work and that his bosses tried to cover it up, possibly even taking the time to remove crucial forensic evidence from the scene. MI6 denies this. Investigators say Williams' baffling death may have been related to his private life, possibly a sexual encounter gone wrong. He was found to have visited websites on bondage and once had to call for help after he tied himself to his bed and couldn't get free. Singapore is seeing a shortage of Indonesian maids. Maid agencies here say it's because agents in Indonesia haven't been recruiting maids for nearly three weeks. They're taking a wait-and-see approach as the Indonesian government prepares to slash their fees next month. The figure could fall to half or even a quarter of the current $3,000. Once that happens, maid agencies here say they expect the supply of maids to resume, but only in September, after the Muslim fasting month. However, the number will still be low than before. So with the crunch, agencies here estimate that their fees will go up, possibly staying above $1,000, not only for Indonesian maids but also those from the Philippines and Myanmar too. 
Details of the transformation of Jurong Lake Park have been revealed. It's one of three destination parks being created and it's described as an island hopping playground which will also be a key node on Singapore's round island route. Together with recreational attractions like Gardens by the Bay and Southern Ridges, Jurong Lake Park will be part of the Round Island Route, a seamless green corridor. The 150 kilometer Round Island Route was announced in February this year. It was mooted by the Urban Redevelopment Authority in 2008 and will open up natural, historical and cultural attractions to the parks and park connectors. When completed, it will be a destination park with unique features. And when designing, and parks will draw inspiration from the area's terrain and characteristics. So the fact that we have the lake is a wonderful uh, advantage. So and parks is going to create um, uh, little running streams uh, in a playground and um, allow families and children and everyone to sort of go hopping around. Uh, 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 from one island to another in the playground itself. Rich in biodiversity, the park will have plenty of natural spaces and trails to allow the public to get closer to nature. Mr. Tharman was speaking at the launch of Jurong Lake Run 2012. Mediacorp is one of the main sponsors of the run. The theme for the run in July is Running as One, reflecting the commitment to attain inclusiveness within the community. And still to come on 5, how African players have helped the Netball Super League here in Singapore. And prepare for provocation as Lady Gaga vows to live up to South Korea's 18 and above rating for her concert. In sport, the Nike Marlins are the 2012 Netball Super League champions. They beat the Blaze Dolphins 52-39 at Wapayo Sports Hall today. The Marlins in green were the defending champions. Their opponents, meanwhile, only picked up form after the semis. But quality was higher overall this season as each team had an African player brought in to raise the level of play in the six-team league. And the Marlins stepped it up in the last quarter of the match for the win and a $10,000 cash prize. Maybank has launched its new Manchester United credit card, which allows fans to score when their club does. It was a colourful event with a bonus in the form of two Man United legends, Dennis Irwin and Paul Parker, making an appearance. The card gives users extra reward points when Man United win matches, plus discounts on club merchandise. They could also win a trip for two to Old, to Old Trafford. Now here's something that will have art collectors screaming with delight. You probably recognize this image. A version of The Scream by Norwegian artist Edward Munch is going up for auction in New York next Wednesday as part of Sotheby's annual spring art sale. And it's expected to fetch at least 80 million US dollars. Are four versions. This is the only one that's held in private hands. The other three in museums won't even leave Oslo. It's also the only piece in the artist's original frame, complete with a handwritten description of how he conceived it. The famous work is said to reflect the anxiety, angst and despair of the world, but its inspiration came on an ordinary outing. He felt dead tired, he couldn't move further, the sky was blazing red and orange in a sunset, and then he says, I heard the great shriek of nature. Everyone believes the figure is screaming, but really what's happening is the figure is reacting, recoiling uh, from the noise of the world. Other highlights of the sale are Roy Lichtenstein's Sleeping Girl, an Andy Warhol piece called Double Elvis and a Pablo Picasso from 1941. These are expected to fetch 30 million US dollars or more. Lady Gaga has kicked off her Born This Way world tour by wowing some 50,000 fans in Seoul. The concert was closed for coverage, but her fans, or Little Monsters, put up quite a show of their own outside the stadium. They also had to sport paper bracelets issued by concert organizers, proving that they were at least 18. South Korean authorities had declared the performance unsuitable for anyone younger. And in response, we're told the diva opened her show by telling the audience she would make sure it was exactly that.
that. And here's what some had to say about being for or against going Gaga. Lady Gaga is a very important thing. She has 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 a very important thing. 어떤 피해 제사라든지 그런 것은 정말 누가 보더라도 정말 대한민국의 부모님이 보더라도 정말 염려하지 않을 수 없는 that was one member of a group of conservative Christian protesters who also made their presence felt. They prayed that the pop superstar would scrap her show and go back to the U.S. Critics are against the sexual content of Gaga's shows and the fact that her, her hit song Born This Way is about gay empowerment. Now, youngsters are a common sight at most universities, but one young fellow caused quite the stir when he showed up at a Colorado campus. And that's because he was a 90-kilo black bear. This was local news coverage of the incident. And as you can see, that caption is a little premature. He's hanging on. Well, in fact, it took the bear 20 minutes to take the tumble. Neither the animal nor any humans were hurt, and in fact, students were delighted at the unusual experience. I just saw this big bear stuck in a tree outside of my dorm, and it was awesome because they had to dart it, and then it fell out, and then we got to touch it, and it was amazing. It's the first, uh, first wild bear I've ever seen. Just uh, start my day, just get in the car, try to go. And you'll be pleased to know the bear was safely returned to the forest. You've been with News 5 tonight. Good night.